How's it going guys, you're watching Rowdy Excess here and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be taking you through my home setup, so the system that I'm currently running um, and some of the big improvements that I wanna to make to the setup that I'll be putting into future videos. So stick around, we'll get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna try and do this in a bit of a vlog style setup as I think it's gonna be far easier to film um, and you'll be able to see a lot easier what's, what's going on. Um, as you can see, the system is currently turned off. That is for your benefit um, as it does run a MORO3 uh, 360 rad and that's coupled with nine uh, EK VARDAR fans, uh, 3000 RPM, so that can get really noisy. Um, and obviously I've got three fans behind the Nexus Monster, which you see on the top there. So yeah, for your benefit alone, um, we'll keep the system off until Towards the end of the video and I'll, I'll turn it on and you can see just how noisy this thing gets. Um, but jumping straight into the specs, um, the motherboard is uh, X299 Dark, uh, coupled with the 10980 XE CPU. This platform is by far my favourite, um, really fun sort of system to play with. Um, can be really testing, you know, it, it can be difficult and got weird sort of bugs, but um, when you get through them it is uh, quite a rewarding platform to use um, and I've had a lot of a lot of good times on this and uh, you can get some really good scores out of it. Um, I've got uh, four sticks of um, DDR4 G skill Trident Z's um, and then we've got the uh, EVGA Kingpin 3090 card. I've not long had this card which is why it's still using the stock cooler. Um, obviously this, this does have the ability to run two sort of independent loops so I do have a water block for the Kingpin which I'll be fitting um, down the line, once I've had a better play with it, um, I did get this card in the sort of the uh, the heat of summer, so I've not really had optimal temperatures to play with yet. Um, but uh, winter is swiftly on its way, and uh, I'll be able to get some uh, some benching in with that. Um, hopefully, in sort of uh, well next next month or so, I would have thought. Um, now, like I said, it is two loops. So the MORO3 is on one loop, the Nexus Monster is on a separate loop. Um, behind here, you'll see we've got an abundance of cables and hoses and mess and all that. But I've got the EK um, X3 250mm res and then another EK D5 pump um, just down the back there. And then underneath all this um, is a dual D5 with a 250mm res. Um, I'll show you that later on in the video. Um, these black tubes that you see here, I'll get more into those later on um, and explain properly why they're there. I know it looks a bit weird and overkill, but they do serve a purpose. Um, next to the rad, we've got uh, two um, multimeters. I use them for measuring power. Um, really handy, um, especially when you start getting into more fine overclocks. Uh, so yeah, that's the, the system in a nutshell. Um, moving up from there, we've got the Fluke thermometer. I use that for liquid nitrogen. I've got the uh, Kingpin um, Tech 9 Fat GPU pot absolutely awesome pot for liquid nitrogen um, here we've got uh, the Kingpin T-Rex uh, revision 4 CPU pots um, the monitor setup so this is just um, sort of a bog standard 24 inch monitor 144 Hertz um, this is the one I mostly use for overclocking as my main monitor is the Samsung Odyssey G9 which chucks out an enormous amount of heat and when you're overclocking and benching um, this system turns out so much heat so obviously using a monitor this size which has very little residual heat um, just helps take the edge off um, as this room can turn into a sauna and uh, a lot of times you find yourself nearly passing out from the heat so it just it just helps with that I do want to upgrade it to a 27 inch because um, obviously now there's quite a few monitors out there which have uh, 27 inch 1440p so I will be upgrading that shortly um, and I'll make a, a video when when I do that um, Moving over here, you've got sort of this wall is pretty much just full of the hardware that I most commonly use. Um, we've got a Z370 Apex, uh, it's got the 9900K, and I think there's some, yeah, uh, two sticks of uh, Z Royals on there. Um, this board is still covered in Vaseline and insulation um, as it was used in a liquid nitrogen um, bench, but uh, I've not cleaned it as of yet. Next to that, we've got the EVGA Dark uh, Z390 board, absolutely wicked board for the 9900K, really fun to play with. Um, moving down, we've got the EVGA Kingpin 2080Ti, yeah, again, covered in Vaseline and looking pretty rank. Next to that, we've got Kingpin 980, um, that's on there pretty much just for nostalgic reasons. I love this card. It's, it, out of all the cards that I've got, this is just 
I, just, I don't know what it is. I just I love it. It's just cool. It's just cool looking. Um, there's the water block for the um, 3090 Kingpin. Um, I'm going to be getting. I'm going to do a video basically on the installation of that and uh, see if I can try and give uh, an explanation on any scalable differences by using that. I assume there will be because the uh, the rad that comes, well, the AIO that comes on the 3090, I do think is quite limited for what this card is able to do. And next to that one, we've also got another 2080 TL Kingpin, but that one is dead. Uh, liquid nitrogen killed that one, so it died an honourable death, but very depressing day for me. Um, and like I said, XG99 is my favourite platform, so I'd actually have two of these boards. I wanted to use one that I just use for pre-testing at home with water cool, um, and then one specifically for liquid nitrogen. Um, but I've not actually actually I've not actually had this on liquid nitrogen yet, so that's why it still looks nice, clean, and pretty. But um, I'm sure in a matter of months it's going to look as rank as that one. Um, and then in there we just got four six of uh, DDR4 Dominator. Next to that we've got the um, EVGA. Uh, X570 board, that's the dark, um, this is the AMD board that they did a little while ago, really really cool board um, and definitely want to be doing more with this um, this winter um, as predominantly it's only sort of Intel that I use but um, I'm really looking forward to using that board, uh, so yeah that's pretty much that one so that's just my, my my sort of in and out hardware that I use most commonly, I know I look like an EVGA shield and to be quite honest with you, I'm, I'm more of a kingpin show. I love the kingpin stuff. Um, really good for overclocking. Um, really easy to use. It just takes a lot of uh, a lot of the faff out, in all honesty. And uh, I just like the way they are. It's just just cool boards. Um, peripheral wise, I've got the. Uh, you have to forgive me. Mouses and keyboards are not really my thing. I'm, I'm not that bothered if they feel nice and uh, they uh, they do the trick. That's all I really care about. But I'm pretty sure it's the Razer Widow. Um, that's. Uh, fairly new and then the mouse is i can't remember the model i think it's like the corsair mmo mouse uh, it's a good mouse but it's getting on now um i've had it quite a long time and it's starting to get a bit uh it's starting to degrade a bit on the top there i don't know if you can see that um but it served me well up until now um and then just a few water blocks and um a sort of kingpin test mat so that's pretty much the setup um that I use at home and this is pretty much how it how it always looks. Um, I'm going to cut the video, get this chair out of the way um, and then I'll go more into the specifications on this and why it looks like this and what I use it for specifically. So yeah, hold tight, we'll get straight to it. Okay, so just before we go delving into this system um, more specifically, um, I'm just going to go through a couple of the upgrades that I want to be doing to this setup soon enough. So um, I want to get a new worktop. I want to go for a bit more of a darker oak finish. And one of the big things I want to do is actually lower it as uh, when I built this, I slightly overestimated my height and uh, it does sit a little bit too high. So I'm going to sort of lower it down a bit um, and uh, yeah, new worktop. So that should look quite nice. And I'll make a video on doing that. Um, but the biggest thing that I want to do is get rid of these drops. Um, one, because they're ugly and they are quite annoying as there's pretty much only just enough space for the uh, the chair to go into. So um, what my plan is, because uh, obviously at the moment it's only got the, the test bed, um, I want to use um, this space uh, for a personal rig for day to day. Um, so I want to get rid of the drawers and I'm going to build in a frame um, and then I'm going to rebuild my Inwin 928 um, with obviously some later gen hardware um, and I'm going to find a nice cool funky way to sit that in there. Um, I want to play around with some ideas as well, sort of fit in an external rad, kind of similar to the MORO3 but not use an MORO3 as they've got a huge footprint and I'm just not going to have the room for it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make a video on that down the line when I'm actually doing it. A lot of this sort of stuff I end up doing on the fly um, and it's kind of like trial and error. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But um, if you've got any suggestions for that, um, let me know down below. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, if they're good and uh, I like the sound of them, then I'll implement them. Um, as you can see, there is a radiator behind there. I do keep that turned off as uh, that's not going to be very good for the system and uh, will affect temperatures quite drastically so that just stays off but in all honesty this heats up the room <laughs> you don't you don't ever need the radiator with this system um now going into this system once again i don't ever mentioned what the chassis was uh, it's a praxis wet bench uh, it's the mark ii really nice easy open air test bench to use 
um, and uh, yeah, just uh, it looks quite nice, and it's um, it's just really it's, it's got like a decent footprint really because it's on an angle. A lot of the flat ones, they don't fit into a size well they wouldn't have fit into a size like this very well so this particular setup was perfect for me um now like we said underneath all this um behind this door down here uh where you see the handles uh, this is where uh, all the water call in and um for the mr r3 so obviously the pumps and the res um, still behind so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this now i'm going to get a light underneath there as a obviously we're not going to see very well and uh, I'll go through what's going on underneath there. Okay, so the lighting is not the best, um, but you can still kind of see what's going on. So um, as you can see, we've got the uh, EK D5 dual pump, um, and then that's got the, um, I think that's an EK, uh, it's just a 240, no it's not, that one is a bit to power res, so that's a uh, bit to power 250 mil res. Um, and then you can see that's where the EK, Vardars there on the back, um, and there's nine of those in pool configuration. Now, this is on an independent uh, PSU for the calling, um, so you turn that on first and then obviously turn the system on. Um, it's only a 600 watt um, power supply for the calling, and then a 1600 watt I use for the system. Um, the pipes that you see coming protruding through the desk, these are what I was talking about on top. Now, the whole reason I built it the way I did, as mad as it looks, um, and probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, um, is it's built to be used with an air conditioner. Now, the way that I would run it um, is the Nexus Monster actually mounts directly to the air conditioner, which I've modified so it attaches to that nice and easily. Um, and then that comes down to the same level as the MORA3 and that pushes cold air through the Nexus Monster, through the MRI 3 and then I'm left with a lot of redundant cold air in the back here. So what these pipes do is they actually draw up that cold air um, and then sprinkle that nicely onto the system. So it's just a, a bit more of an efficient way to use um, what's left. Um, and it does make a good difference. Obviously, normally you just have fans um, sort of uh, aiming down into the system um but uh this was a, a far better way to get it um even cooler now the reason that i use the air conditioner with the nexus monster is because it's actually a far more efficient way to get the system well to get the loop cooler because the because of the surface area of the mori3 it's so big um it takes a long time for that to actually cool down to a decent temp um and uh yeah, it, you just get a far more quicker response um, from the Nexus Monster. So depending on what type of bench I'm doing, if it's CPU intensive, I'll run the CPU through the Nexus um, and uh, vice versa for the GPU. Um, but uh, if you're just on ambient, obviously the, the MORA3 is better, um, but with the air conditioner um, working and aiding it, um, the Nexus Monster is actually the, the better performing radiator. And you can, I've, had the, well, I've had the loop nearly freeze before, which is why I use screen wash, washer fluid, um, for a lot of my systems, um, as that coolant can go down to far lower temperatures, uh, as obviously you can get down to pretty much zero um, on a good winter day with the air conditioner. And because the air conditioner is modified, it never turns off. So um, obviously you have to be very careful with that if you're ever doing something like that yourself. Um, but uh, yeah, it can get very, very cold in here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll give you one more look. Obviously there's a speaker system in the back there. That's only for, if I don't want to use a headset, I've got something to listen to, but it's bulky and ugly. So it stays underneath there. And then obviously I've just got some spare cooling bottles and uh, electrical contact cleaner for emergencies. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So not that pretty underneath there, but it was designed very much for function um, over form. So it's uh, it, obviously you can't see it when it's all packed away, but uh, that is how that works. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to start the system up um, and you can see for yourself just how noisy this can get. So if you're wearing headphones, I will give you a warning. I have no idea how this is going to come through the camera. I would imagine quite annoyingly. Um, so uh, yeah, we won't have it running for long, but uh, I'll let, sort of give you an idea of what it sounds like. Okay, so that's with the um, call-in system started up. So the Nexus Monster has got three fans um, just behind there. The EK Vardars, the same as the MORA3, um, which has nine fans. And that's 
basically the, the minimal noise. So this isn't the fans on pretty much their lowest setting. So as you can imagine, it will get very loud. I'll ramp them up shortly um, as they want a manual controller and uh, you can hear what it's like on full chat. So if we go ahead and start the system, As you can see, the AIO, um, that will also kick up some extra noise. Um, so this is probably, on a minimum, this is the noisiest it will ever be, um, as normally I'll just be running it with the uh, the Nexus Monster and the MORO3. And there she is spawning up. It's currently on the um, Odyssey G9. Uh, as like I said, it's been summer months, so I've not really done much overclocking. So it's just been used in a sort of a normal configuration to use. Um, so yeah, this is it pretty much on a minimal noise basis. And then if we ramp it up, you can see there'll be quite a leap in noise. And that's the system on full chat. So that's the, uh, the fans on both the MRI 3 and the Nexus Monster running flat out. Um, like I said, I have no idea how this is going to come through the uh, camera, so if this is blowing your head off, I do apologise, but it's only for an example. So if we turn that back down. With the MOR3, if you're just browsing and, and you're not gaming or anything, you can actually turn um, a few of the fans off as you don't need all nine running uh, for this rad, rad to be effective. Um, so you can reduce the noise a bit more, but I like to play it safe and just sort of keep them all at their minimum. So yeah, that is pretty much it. And that's the system I use at the moment day to day. Like I said, I do want to build the in wind backup, um, which is going in this space here. So I will be doing videos, obviously, on the uh, the build of the in wind once I've decided what route I'm going to go, uh, CPU, GPU, etc. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be making more videos on doing the um, desk upgrades. Um, and then building the frame for the Inwin 928. So if that's stuff that you want to see, um, obviously, please do subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications so you don't miss it. And if you have any suggestions um, of more content that you might want to see from this, obviously, I'm happy to do that. I feel like there's a lot we can do. I'm always switching out hardware and trying other bits and pieces. So um, there's always something going on with this. Um, and uh, yeah, any suggestions as far as it goes to the desk um, that you think might look cool, uh, let me know and I'll say if they're good suggestions I'll, uh, I'll implement them so as always guys thanks very much for watching um, and uh, yeah we'll see you again in the next one cheers